Hello and so in this video we're going to look at some basic animation using text. In the last video I walked you through the basics of After Effects and how you can quickly create some movement using the different properties and in this video we're going to use those properties and a little bit more sophistication to create something that's a little bit more meaningful and useful. So here we are with um, some text and a background. I've already added these so you don't have to wait around and one thing I wanted to show you was the align function. So obviously you know what it does, but it's really useful to have um, to make sure you get things in the center. It's all well and good at eyeballing it and thinking you're in the, in the center, but by making sure it is, it's always looks a lot better, especially with motion graphics. So we'll start with the first one, which was drop. So let's just change that to, oops, drop. Okay, and I've set the anchor point to the bottom of this because it's coming from the top so I want it to actually use this as the base. So let's start a a keyframe so let's just go to our position and record a position for our drop and then we're going to come back and I'm going to hit the hold the command or the control key then arrow back five one two three four five and then I'll move this up and we should have a drop like so. It looks a bit stale when you just have just a simple bit of movement like that. It's quite linear and in After Effects you really want to be able to use its power to make it look a little bit more believable. So what we can do is we can create like a little bit of a bounce. So once it's hit the ground we want it to maybe pop up a little bit more. So we'll just go forward a couple of frames pop up and then a couple more frames or three frames down and then what we can do is we can copy that keyframe so select it copy it and paste it so that's putting that frame back so what we've got now is a little bit more of a believable drop it looks like it's hitting something and we've not done anything exceptionally exciting we've just created keyframes one a starting position one an end then an up and then we've copied that one from there. So you can see how easy it is to create these things. So let's do the next one. So we'll turn that layer off. Actually we won't, we'll just, we'll copy that text and we'll then turn it off and then we'll add some more text. And then this time we're gonna have pop. So again, let's get it aligned my line gone, there it is. So center, center. Now this one's gonna pop from the center, so I need to move my anchor point to the middle. So let's just position that in the middle. And this time this is gonna pop forward. So end point again. Remember this time we're gonna use scale. So S on the keyboard brings up the scale property. So click the stopwatch to record. Go back five frames, one, two, three, four, five. Reduce it down to zero. And then we've got a pop. And again, it looks a bit static. So let's have an overshoot. So let's go forward two frames and then let's change that to 120%. Now we could add a keyframe in here that's the same as this one. So we can just copy that and paste it and that would do exactly what we wanted. But we actually don't need this keyframe here. So what we can do is we can just move that to there. So we've got an overshoot now that then bounces back to a, a, a the right size. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. If we're a little bit more exaggeration with things, you'll get a bit more of a pop. And let's try a little bit more, let's go 160. There we go. And if we, if we speed that up, take a couple of frames off it, we're now getting much more of a, a pop. I was happy with it there. So there's pop. Lock that one. Turn it off. 
third one we're going to do is slide. So let's get slide on. Again, use the align to position it. Just wait for the noise in the background. It's actually a toilet in the background. Would you believe it? So with this one, we're going to do position. So we're going to bring it in from the left. So let's press P on the keyboard, stopwatch, go back a few frames. Let's go back five frames and then position that off our screen to the left. So we've got that. So again, let's create a little bit of an overshoot. So let's move it forward a little bit more and then bring this back to there. And then we should get a bit of a, a bounce. A little bit slower. There we go. So again, a bit more believable. So as you can see, these are really quick and not particularly difficult to do. The last two, reveal and appear, use a little bit more um, complex uh, elements, I should say, called masks. So the next one we're going to look at is appear. So again, using the align tool, just to get it positioned. And with this time, we're not going to use the position attribute in here. We're not going to use this one. I'll show you what's going to happen. So if I was to draw a square over this here, it would add a new shape layer like this. However, if I have this selected when I draw a shape, it creates a mask. So it doesn't create a shape layer. It creates a mask on the appear layer. Do that once more. So not selected, nothing selected. It draws a shape, creates a shape layer, undo. With the layer selected, selected, and I use the same tool, it creates a mask. Okay. Now, if I was to use the position key to make this appear come up to this mask, so ideally what, what I want to do is I want this appear to come up from below, but I only see it when it comes through the mask area. If I was to use the traditional position keyframe here, and I go back five frames and then move this down, you'll see that it doesn't work because the mask goes with this. That's no good. So what we're going to do is instead of using this position, we're going to do something different. So when we look under text, we've got this little option called animate. So animate text. And in here we can choose a position attribute. So we're going to select position on this one. And then we're going to move it down. So now we've got this appearing. OK, again, if you want to add a little bit of a, a bump, you can move it up a little bit and then swap them around and then you'll get a little bit of a bump. Let's just speed it up a little bit. OK, so you'll only be able to see what's inside this mask. Obviously, if I make this mask smaller, you'll only see part of the text. So there you go. Apologies for the noise in the background. Um, the room that I'm in backs onto a toilet. So um, yeah, uh, if you can hear the hairdryer in the background, that's what it is. Um, OK, so that's a peer. In the last one that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a similar technique with reveal. And it's going to animate the mask instead of the words. So let's just add the text again. So reveal, let's get that positioned. Okay, again, remembering to select the object first to draw the mask. And then this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the mask. 
So I'm not going to do the text and animate here because I'm not animating the text. The text is going to stay there. I'm going to animate the mask. And so we go to the mask and then we look for mask path. So let's just click on that as the endpoint and then get the arrow tool to select the mask. This can be a little bit awkward sometimes. Oops. Grab all of the right bits. There we go. So I bring this back to the beginning of where I want to start. And as you can see, what will happen is it'll animate between the two points. So we've got a reveal. And you can make that as slow as you want, as you know. There we go. There's also some other properties on the mask, which are things like feather. So you can actually feather the edges. So you can now see that it's showing a little bit of a feather around the edges. And you've got a an expansion, so that'll make it bigger or smaller. So you can make it bigger or smaller than the mask itself. But it creates quite a nice effect. You've just got to be careful with the, the feather so you don't end up with like a little bit of a something showing here, as you can hear the hair dryers going in the background. So if let's just reduce that mask feather down until we can't see that. There we go. And now we still get a little bit of a feather, but we don't see the same way. So that's five really simple, really interesting and easy ways to create some animation. I um, hope you enjoyed that. I look forward to doing some more videos later on in the year for After Effects.